Hi, this is Michael Uslin. You're watching Batman on film. I'm vengeance. I have given a name to my pain. Hey now, welcome to episode 33. This is the Tony Dorsett, the Tony <laughs> Dorsett episode of the Batman on Film Social Hour. Do you know who Tony Dorsett is, Brian Lauer? Yeah, football player. Or who? Um, For the them Cowboys. Yes. How about yes. them Cowboys? Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. Played for uh, University of Pittsburgh. Heisman Trophy winner. And 76. Six, I believe, 76 season. He was uh, at Pitt. But yeah, Ring of Honor, Tony Dorsett, number 33. All right. Uh, I go. am the founder of Batman on Film, Bill Ramey. And with me, and I mentioned Ryan Lauer is already here. Ryan Lauer, spelled like lower, senior BIF contributor, uh, is sitting in on today's show. And unfortunately, Pete Vera is doing quote unquote major lawn work <laughs> that's that's and, pete and can't and can't will not be able to join us today so there's a big um, shoes to fill it it's is a big, it's a big beard to fill um <laughs> i hope i can hope i can live up yes so let's talk about batman day 2021 batman day i have pe people i always put this on my facebook like happy batman day it's really, this really is Batman day. And people are, are think, you know, they think I'm doing a bit a lot of the times yeah. because yeah. they don't realize it really is Batman day, third weekend of this September. So um, do you kind of feel like Batman day of all the days of, of these comic book superhero characters, that's kind of like the biggest one, or is it just cause I'm myopic and because I'm a Batman fan, it just seems that Batman day gets more run for some uh, reason do any others get them i feel like harley quinn got one but outside of her there's a superman I, I day right asked, there was uh, i believe i missed it then i and really thought i mean that's or that speaks to my point uh, <laughs> yeah the, yeah um batman i mean he's the the tail that wags dc's dog so yeah. um I'm, it makes total sense i'm also a little biased uh but yeah it, i agree it, it speaks volumes that it, batman is a big a big deal although i like with you if, if some of uh friends or family stumble across and see hey batman day or something like that you know they send it to me and um yeah my retort is usually yes technically but almost like every day is batman day for me I well guess. i was gonna Kinda. say that I mean, <laughs> it leads me into this what did you do anything special for batman day i did we you, had did plans. you go anywhere did you go to a comic book store did you buy anything i mean even if you bought it on amazon that would count no this is like the first because it's usually a great excuse for me of this is my this is my excuse that i can get on amazon and just look and find something and buy and bill we were we were busy from late morning all the way till late at night with uh family stuff and so i i watched an episode of um uh, Batman the animated series. Okay. I watched an episode of The Batman. And then that night I watched uh Lego Batman Family Matters. I I don't know if you remember that one. That was mm -hmm. a straight to video mm -hmm. release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wrote a review for it on BOF. Yeah. It's a it's a charming little Lego film. Mm -hmm. Um that's that's to the extent, that's as much as I was able to do on Batman Day. It was a big failure. Damn family, you know? Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of a failure, but that's okay because I'm gonna make up for it soon. Uh, they've got some Batman Lego stuff coming out that I'm probably gonna buy. So well, we go. I'll say this: um, every day 
is literally Batman day for me. Hell yeah. Because I do something for the site. Almost, I mean, daily. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. either posting something or I am looking, doing research, you know, trying to see if there's any news or anything that needs to go out. So I, I wouldn't say I did anything out of the ordinary other than I did order. I got a link from, from DC shop. There's a new Funko pop coming out and it's like, is, you know what I'm talking about? It has, is it a double or no? I don't think so. Okay. It's like, you a tell yours and then I'll tell it's you a regular, I'm... the one I, and I did order. It's a little, it's had a pre-order actually. It's a little, um, um, what you, what, what I want to call it. Um, it's traditional Batman, black, okay. all black, but it's like kind of sparkly. Oh, okay. You know, it's got like a sparkly type um, um, tint to the whole thing. You know? Okay. So, yeah, I didn't. I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. So I got that. There you it, go. And then it's I pre-ordered it. it. Doesn't out isn't out yet. But so there's another one that is that must not be the one that you're referring to. No, the one that I was sent this week was a, I think it's a GameStop exclusive of it's a double. It's another Batman eighty nine except okay. the uh, Keaton and then Joker. But when he's in, uh, when he has the pen during the mime uh, scene, he needs he's like it's your Uncle Bingo. Yeah, time to cash check and throws the pen. And yeah, stabs. that that outfit. He's in that outfit. Okay, and I'm like, well, that's cool. But I've got that Keaton already. Yeah, when they did him solo, and I've got uh, Jack's Joker also. So it's like, ah, I I can't justify it. I, it's having two of the same. Okay, you've told me this. My mind said, agrees with you. My but. heart is saying <laughs> that I'm going to get that. Regardless, because I do have I have an individual Keaton yeah. and I also have the rooftop scene, you know, that oh, combination. Yeah. I held off on that one, too. Yeah. And I've got <sighs> also have the I have Joker like with the Bolero hat, yeah. you know, and I also mm -hmm. have the beret makeup, you know, wa mm -hmm. the wash look. So I will probably get it. See, we Damn are why DC keeps doing this. <laughs> yeah, we sure. are why DC keeps doing this. So other than that, not really I do anything particular. I mean, it always falls in September on a Saturday, yeah. and that's college football is on, and I'm a football guy, so I watch football. So I did not put in anything to watch or anything like that. But uh, we all wondered if uh, – I got a lot of questions from people. Like, do you think that – do you think Matt Reeves, do you think Warner Brothers will release anything from the Batman – on Batman Day, and my answer was I doubt it, uh, because you got Fandom is in yeah. like, what three weeks now, basically for the most part. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, just over three weeks. And I don't think they're going to put out anything that packs a bang. Yeah, if you will. Yeah. Uh, to to take any of the luster and then you know I mean that that trailer and seeing whatever presentation Matt Reeves does again. People are stoked for that, you know? Still watching the trailer. And so you don't want to take anything. <laughs> yeah, I'm still watching the one from last year. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but, but both Matt Reeves did put out a picture of him at his editing bay with a, you could, and you could see a shot of Pattinson as Batman on mm -hmm. the screen with, uh, I guess, the grappling gun that he's yeah. going to use in the film. So not much, but little something what do you think any thoughts on on that i mean you can, we can, i don't know we can analyze that image all that much other than no, you've got the I mean, grappling gun i mean matt reeves could have tweeted out a picture of him on the warner brothers lot and just saying yeah i love batman and i think we yeah. all have been like that's awesome he's working on it would it's funny because it's like we know he's working on it mm -hmm. but we get a picture of him working on it and it's just like hell yeah see i knew yeah. it i knew he was working on it yeah. um it's just I don't any any little bit because it's been so long since we've had it's a freaking Batman movie. Anything that comes yeah. out is just exciting. And so a solo Batman movie, um, and it's something a new direction of a solo Batman movie, anything that's released of that, an image, 
It'd be an image that was in the trailer and Matt Reeves standing in front of it and it'd be like, oh my God, did you see the Batman image? And so it's just, it's exciting. Um, he probably knows the power he has of <laughs> anything yeah. he tweets out because he does it sparingly too, which is always more mm -hmm. effective too. Oh, yeah. So when, when Matt Reeves speaks, everybody listens because he's not always running his mouth. <laughs> so yeah, that was just cool to see that he put something out. And um on Batman Day, because he is a Batman fan as well. I yep. told, uh, and speaking of being in the editing bay, I told, I think, Pete on the last social hour, um, you know, I'll get, I, I also get a lot of questions about where he's at in the process, you know, and people mm -hmm. think, well, he's probably already done. I went, hey, I doubt it, because Emma Thomas told me, <clears throat> excuse me, when, when they were editing Rises, The Dark Knight Rises, they, they, they finished editing just five days, a little less than a week before the first press screening. So, I mean, they go right up to yeah. the, the 12th hour, you know? Oh, well, this is, I think anybody, so I, I, I'm not in the level, obviously, of Matt Reeves, but I work in media and most of us usually in working with media and you're working up until the last minute on everything because you're you're never settled mm -hmm. it's not like you get stuff done early and you're like boom it's done it's like uh oh mm -hmm. i got it done early that means something's not working and so yeah. you go back and you're yeah. always revising so i can only imagine for a movie like that with not that there's necessarily a ton of pressure but it's just you've got batman you've got mm -hmm. batman here it's got to come out perfect so i can only imagine how many times you're going over everything you know, yeah, with I cut microscope. this. <laughs> Should I put that back in? Does this need yeah. to come out? You know, I mean, is this five frames too long? Like yeah, every single shot. I can only imagine. So, um, good for you, Matt Reeves. Okay, I think the the coolest thing that was released uh, by a member of the crew was uh, the the uh, composer Michael Giancino. Hope I'm saying that correctly. Uh, shared about what thirty seconds of him. Uh, conducting the orchestra for the score and it's the you know yeah. the, that main theme uh and we've heard it before but this was a little bit more full i guess yeah. you know uh, than what we've heard before and i really uh i didn't catch it because i watched it um like on my phone first and then i watched it on my laptop but not with uh earbuds and I miss and my son, Micah, Micah Ramey, you, that you, that he's been on your show and then yeah. did his show with us. Uh, he texted me and said, oh, those drum, that drum at the, those drums at the end were awesome. You know, and then I went back, put the headphones in and you can hear that boom, 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 boom at the, you know, with the, yeah. at the end with just, just with the, with the drums. And it was, it was awesome. Woo. Woo. Yeah, I I dug it. I mean, since the the suit reveal in January, holy crap, January of 2020. Mm. Man, that seems like ages ago. Uh, since the music, we got the tease there. I thought it was really cool. And yeah, this 30 second one, it does. It just feels a little bit more full, for sure, with that orchestra in there. And I, listening to it and just trying to picture like that vibe of this of this movie. I mean, that's what makes it even more cool. Is You've, you know, we've gotten, we've got a trailer, we've got some images, we know the atmosphere, roughly what they're shooting for. And now put that music over those images. And it's kind of like, damn, this is, this is exciting. <laughs> I have really exciting. I mean, of course I have it. I don't know what's in store with, you know, the full score. I know every time that uh, Mr. Giancino uh, tweets something, it's only been a couple of times, Matt Reeves will retweet say, I can't wait for everybody to hear the whole thing, you know? Yeah. And, uh, it there's something about this one i i really like all the scores for all the films to be honest yeah. i mean even you know I, I i i'll defend the batman forever score it, that's LA stuff that, all i love it i love that one i picture those opening credits when yeah. and i think of that music i loved yeah. that batman forever theme of course i loved elfman's theme yeah. i i love yes. what hans zimmer did and yes i liked I like maybe minority here. I liked what Zimmer and Junkie XL did for the Batman theme and Batman vs Superman. So yeah, I'm with you. I've liked I've liked all of them. And this one, I'm not gonna sit here and say, but this one's gonna be better. It's like no, this just seems like yeah, it's gonna be that upper level stuff that I've really dug so far. So. And it's gotta be 
you're when I mean, you're coming off of you're following and i'm not saying you're like trying to top but i mean you've got the elfman theme is kind of uh, it's classic it is you know uh, mm-hmm. that's what a lot of a lot of people think of when they think batman you know yeah uh, you've got the batman the an- and uh, animated series which you know took elfman's theme and then uh shirley walker added you know a different her own spin to it it's kind of got mm-hmm. its own little um uh, you know beat its own little um uh, riff um i i like the golden fall stuff for forever and batman and robin i liked how he he explained how he came up with it did he ever tell you have you ever heard that no he i know he no. because he didn't tell me i saw <laughs> it on video he was like when i was a kid when i would play with my action figures you know I always did the the action i would hum an action theme when i played huh. with them and That's i cool. remember i did that as a kid you know boom, 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 boom. yeah and so and he was like you know boom, 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 you know that, so that's how he came up with it. What I thought was pretty neat. Yeah, that's cool. And I, I like the Zimmer stuff, you know, mm-hmm. from I, I really like that, you know, the Batman theme and that. So, but you're following all that stuff to come up something something distinct and different, yeah. but still Batman ish. It's got to be yeah. a challenge. And I mean, he took it on. And I mean, you know, I mean, you, it's you're not it's, you're not someone on his uh, his level of of uh, uh, you know being a film composer if you don't accept you know yeah want the challenge exactly and so that's the thing of not trying to top it's trying to live up to yeah this level it's like yeah. you've been invited to the all-star team mm-hmm. what do you have to contribute and it's like oh hell yeah i've got an idea i hope it works so what's really awesome to me is i never it always feels like later in the process or used to uh, composers were announced maybe deep into the film filmmaking Mm -hmm. of the of the movie and such uh and giacchino it was i feel like he was teased i mean hell january of 2020 is when we got the tease with the music and so before it even went into uh filming it was known that giacchino was going to be on yeah and he had already wrote the batman and he had wrote the whole thing so i think that was exciting to me in the sense of i think yeah, him and Reeves, I thought were were pals. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know if they've worked on a movie together. Didn't he do the Apes? Did movies? they work on the Apes? Okay. I think. Um, yeah. yeah, it seems familiar that they did. And so to me, it was just that was exciting. Of there's a he already had. It seems like he already has an idea, and Reeves is already on board, and they yeah. haven't even started filming. Okay, I think I'm really interested in to see how this sounds. And then we got our taste yeah. really early on. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I, I mean, I not like I any idea what it was going to sound like mm-hmm. this is really refreshing because this is different and sounds really cool and moody mm-hmm. so i know uh, he's listening yeah. well done well done michael yeah <laughs> and and my son told me he's big into big into music and like records on vinyl and stuff he's got his own you know the vinyl voyage podcast and all that and they talk about stuff like that but he's like i can't wait to get the score for this mm-hmm. film and I'm gonna get it on vinyl and you know and play it so that's my favorite thing to do is yeah. listen listening to Batman scores while I read while I read no it's not just comics it's just reading in general because I don't do as well if it's just absolute silence mm-hmm. um but yeah putting on some earbuds or putting on a speaker and just listening to the scores while I read is always very comfortable to me and comforting so this will be added sight unseen as soon as it's available okay so moving on yes i'm with you i'm excited i want to and i i will enjoy watching the uh behind the scenes featurette i hope there is one uh of him talking about how he came up with the music and the score and he you know how that riff how he how that came to him and and so forth so that's going to be that's going to be fun um so i asked one thing i did on batman day i think it may have been the day before but whatever it was for Batman Day. I ask um, people to tweet out how you became a Batman fan using only a picture or a, or a meme gif, you know. And I said, I'll go first. And, of course, I put, uh, it was the opening animated uh, segment from the Batman TV show of the 1960s with Adam West and Burt Ward. And um, so I got, I mean, 
80, 90, 100 responses, you know? Woo. And so I went through and just check, you know, some people didn't play by the rules. They <laughs> wrote a, they wrote a paragraph or well, how many characters are allowed in Twitter. And, uh, uh, I, the, the top three were, and I want to see what you think about this is Batman 66, Adam West, Batman 89, uh, you know, with Michael Keaton, Tim Burton's film and Batman, the animated series. So that's not too surprising to me. Those three, what, what is surprising and it kind of is not at the same time is that very few people posted an image of a comic book, which is the source material for Batman. You know, it's where it started. Not even I did that. And I'm old, you know, <laughs> so, um, you can take a lot. You can tell about how old someone is by based on how they became a Batman fan. Mm -hmm. I think, um, people of my vintage if you're probably in your 40s 50s and up uh 40s and 50s it's probably adam west um there's exceptions to the rule mm -hmm. if you're probably if you're a batman fan that are that is older even older than me it's probably comic books because there wasn't anything really you know, except for the 40 serials and then probably your vintage and i don't I know you mentioned comic books as well, but a lot of your vintage is Batman animated series for a lot of people, your, your generation, yeah. I would suspect. So what is yours? I kind of, I played by the rules and I broke them. Yes. Because I put the, the gif of the end of 89 of Batman okay. standing there in the signal in the sky. I put that gif in there and yeah. I just wrote plus comics. Yeah. Because I have, asked my parents uh over and over again and they don't remember so i just say i can't i shot out of the womb loving batman mm -hmm. uh they don't remember if it was batman 89 or if it was comics and so as long as i can remember like i loved 89 and was amazed when it was on tv how, or how were you when batman 89 came out I was two and a half. Okay. So you don't remember <laughs> so, it coming out? No, not at all. I know nothing. Oh, um, okay. Returns was the first thing that I could really remember that movie was coming up because I used to go to the video store and I'd ask if we could rent Curly Sue because in front of the Curly Sue VHS tape was the trailer for Batman Returns. Yeah. And it was Batman and Catwoman fighting. And so I just asked if we could rent it so I could just keep watching <laughs> that trailer. Yeah. Remember video stores? Uh, I do. Those Blockbuster. <laughs> I remember it. Yeah. But, um, that's as like that's as much because my uncle was an influencer on me of i just he he said that he tried to get me on spider-man and my brother on batman and my brother wasn't all that interested in either and i didn't care about spider-man i loved batman so i've got comics from you know 1990 which is why mm -hmm. brave vocals i think is one of my favorite artists because very impressionable at my age those were the batman images i saw and then i saw burton's batman so i don't know which one came okay. first much more likely you know i watching tv that i saw batman keaton's batman on the screen for advertisements or something um so i don't know my i shall love the batman moment but it's it's safe to say it was 89 and comics and then right on the heels was returns in the animated series so i i don't remember i don't remember not being a batman fan same in yeah. my life i don't i don't um i have a picture uh, which is, it's become a meme of all things, but it's me on my third birthday getting a homemade Batman costume. Uh, I remember that slightly, but I was already, there was a reason I was getting that because I was already a Batman yeah. fan. That'll be the cover of your biography. Yes, is it should that, be. That yes. picture, it, yeah. <laughs> I've been a Batman fan my whole life, damn it. Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, so that, and I know I was, getting comic books at the same time mm -hmm. okay i don't know what the, i don't know chicken or egg thing but i was I, I always remember watching the adam west show i don't i remember when it i remember when the movie first aired on abc on a saturday night it probably was 68 
you know, mm. somewhere around there. I was three. I remember my mom putting me in front of the TV. I remember them running down the street together, you know, and all that. Uh, that's also a, a, a gift meme too, you know, and the people <laughs> yeah. inserted other people behind them. You ever seen those? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. That's all good right. stuff. I remember that. Um, so I remember watching that and loving that show and how serious I took it. You know, it's, it was it was as serious as the Dark Knight to me when I was four, five, six years so, old. Oh, of course. So it's funny that you mentioned that because when do you think 89 first aired on TV? Because, you know, they made it a primetime event yeah. of Batman. Would it have been 90 or 91? 90 or 91. OK, because yeah. I distinctly remember that being on TV. Yeah. And I was already aware of it. And so that even I was trying to do that tracing back of, OK, if 90 or 91, I was already aware of it. And then I had to go to bed before the parade scene started. And though I at that point I had seen the movie, I don't know how many hundreds of times, but it, it I really threw a fit. Ryan at four mm -hmm. or five years old because I couldn't finish Batman, which I'd seen before and I couldn't see that parade scene. Um, so that's just a little note, too. Of, it's funny that that young we can remember it's on TV. I've got to watch it. Yeah. And there's uh, any thoughts about the lack of comic books being the source of <clears throat> Batman fandom? It's a that's an interesting conversation because oh. Uh, it still has the I think it it makes total sense that people are exposed or were exposed through a screen mm -hmm. um, TV show or movie because you're not it, it's it's a much safer zone to watch it that way as opposed to going to a comic shop because there's there's still a little bit of comics are extremely nerdy and people still do the boom bang pow with comics. Mm -hmm. In which, you know, I tell some people of like the, it's it hasn't been like that for decades. Comics have really grown up. It's kind of more uh, any genre now with comics, any tone, and there's a lot of maturity and a lot of movies and TV shows now are based on comics, mm -hmm. and they're ones that mainstream people are digging up and really enjoy and love. And it's not nerdy to watch that show. But let's not talk about the comic that it's based off of. So, or, or they have no idea it comes from a comic, you know? Yeah, or that either. Or it's like, really? Um, it, so it's interesting that as far as comics have come, just even in my lifetime, mm -hmm. and it still has kind of a a little bit of like a negative stigma attached to it. And people will give it a shot because they can now they can stream something, and they don't have to be judged. And then. A lot of them are just good that they don't need to read more on the character or then that's their introduction. So then they're like, sure, I'll give it a shot now and maybe then go to a store and and track down whoever it's based on. Here's does a all that make sense. Here's yes, it does. It, here's a tough question. Are you a Batman? If you do not read Batman comics, are you a true Batman fan? Oh, that, this is where I miss Pete. Pete gets all riled up over people who don't do the uh, yeah, who don't do the do the work. I think, as he says, um, I I think as long as you like the character in whatever form, you can be a fan. Because otherwise, that's I don't know. Maybe it's almost maybe a little dickish if you are to say, well, you're not a true something fan. Now you're starting to put your nose up in the air. And I just get happy if somebody's wearing a Batman anything. Mm -hmm. Like awesome. Um, my, I, I've got fiance's nephews, you know, have worn Batman and stuff and they, they haven't read Batman stuff. Yeah. Um, and they like Batman. And, I'm, and I think that's awesome. My fiance doesn't read comics, but Batman's her favorite hero. She's down to watch. So I think yeah. in short, to just answer your question, I think, um, yeah, you can be a fan if you just genuinely like the character. For me, it gives you a little bit more cred if you've if you've read the history, you know the history of the mm -hmm. character mm -hmm. in that form. I'm with you. I would I would not there's a there's a little bit there's a little bit in me of like but you'd never read a Batman comic, you know? Yeah. Uh and there's a, I will say that maybe more than a little bit, but Batman is so big and is I mean, he's video games, he's animation, he is um, 
uh, movies. He's yeah. on TV, t television shows now um, that it's hard to, to say that you, you, that you're not a fan of the character if you don't, if you've never read a comic when there's just so much more. But I would say if you are one of those who maybe never read a comic, maybe picked up a couple, you know, just a classic, year one dark night returns whatever long halloween anyways long halloween <laughs> there is there i would encourage you to to read i get emails brian i've gotten emails from people who are batman on film fans of the website who who have said i've never read a comic book in my entire life where do i start what should i read you know that's where we're batman's fortunate there's, I yeah. think that there are other comic characters that that's a tough question, but Batman, we're fortunate in the books you just mentioned. It's like, yeah. hey, start start with year one. Yeah. After that, if you want to go, you can watch how he starts and how he ends. Uh, year one and Dark Knight Returns. Oh, you and, want more? The Long you know, Halloween. Oh, you want more? Like there are perfect examples of. That's interesting. That's right interesting, in. and would make for an interesting show completely. Maybe, maybe I'll hit up Garrett and y'all and uh he can talk about it on a on a do a podcast on the Batman on film podcast yeah um does Batman have more of these go-to classics comic book stories than any other character I mean I can think of I mean honestly I and I'm a Superman fan but I think if someone said what should, what would I read I would I would say we'll get that you know get the John Byrne uh re yeah. reboot from the 80s um Red Sun, you know, um, I, I would have a hard time with, uh, you know, the death and return of Superman, but just because it's, I, I'm not a huge fan of that. So, but I, I, I don't see, I, I don't think no. it's, it's in the same category as a lot of the Batman stuff, you know? I don't think, I don't think so either. And I think because that's such a benefit that I hope DC is DC is kind of getting on now with their black label of just doing yeah. these smaller these smaller stories that are standalone because you can get more it's not intimidating. So yeah. you just said the death and return of Superman to somebody who's never read it to see that much material that's that's intimidating and not to mention the amount of characters that can that can come into that story that you're unfamiliar with like as you were just thinking that I'm like what kind of Superman stories I even thought well people all-star superman's good and i'm like but i remember the first time i read that and i was lost i was unfamiliar with a lot of the the legacy and the lore of the character and to just compare that with batman somebody goes into the long halloween i know that's my favorite but i'm trying to think open-minded here i think you could definitely make sense of of the story you're not lost if yes you just he's jump right into that story. he's he's a young batman but he's already batman there's and, and you know what you know the, the origin yeah. who doesn't know the origin of batman you know mm -hmm. yeah and you read it uh there's your one i mean there's just so many so many batman classic batman stories my son micah i mentioned earlier i mean he's even said um he'll come what what and he's read a lot i uh, i give him should i should i pick up this should i pick up that uh i my thing lately or relatively lately is um he's been asking me about scott snyder's run and mm -hmm. you know should i pick up what's what he read he loves court of owls mm -hmm. should i should i pick up I'm, and i was like i love scott snyder's run almost all of it i wasn't a big fan of super heavy yeah um and whatnot but yeah i mean there's most of scott snyder's stuff is great you know and that's just an example he's yeah. like i don't want to read these soap operas you know co comic book soap operas where it's a storyline that lasts forever where I can just pick up a trade. I can pick up whatever and yep. read it as one story. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've got, I got it off tangent, but yeah, I would encourage, <laughs> you know, encourage people to read some of these classic stories. Cause there's a lot, a lot for Batman, you know? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You, you mentioned something with my, with my podcast. I'm about to record episode 76 already. And it's, uh, it still feels like haven't scratched the surface. Yeah. Somebody even said recently of like, maybe you should slow down because you might run out. And we're, we're never going to run out of yeah. stories to talk about with Batman. There's, there's endless 
the mounts. I picked <laughs> We're up. We're in the, good shape. Did I tell you I picked up? Because of yeah. you in, in the in your show. Yeah. I picked up the Dark Prince Charming. So. Have you dove in yet? I've started. I've got okay. only, but I haven't got into that. I wouldn't say I'm, I've jumped in all the way yet, but I'm and getting there. Yeah. That's a fresh example too. Of, yeah. No, this is that's not on the level. I don't think mm -hmm. of the the classics, but that's a story that, hey, I want something new, Batman to read. Yeah. Try the Dark Prince Charming. It's contained. Yeah. You don't need to do your research before. Or there's nothing that came after. You can just dive right in. And this a strength. Another great example of something that I really like right now because I've said it. I, said, I think you were on the show when I talked about this. I, I've I stopped reading Batman. I can't tell you. I've been with Batman for years and years and years. And so, um, but I am enjoying, and I wish they'd do more of this. I, I love that um, Batman, the detective. Uh, yeah. You know, I I like those kind of stories where it's, I don't have to be reading a, a, a monthly or bi-monthly or whatever and follow these long, long ass storylines. And I think it would be good for people they can just, you know, pick that up, you know, uh, mm -hmm. hey, this is six issues. And then if you don't want to wait six months, seven, eight months for it all to come out, it's going to come out as a as a trade graphic novel anyway. So pick it up, you know, I, I, I kind of and I get the the monthlies. So Batman and Detective, they're constants yeah. um, They're It's almost like in film industry where you got to have a blockbuster because that's what can help fund the small projects yeah. scat sprinkled throughout the year. So the the constants, Detective Comics and Batman, got to have those going because then that's money for DC that they can put forth for the Black Label three issue series or something like that. Uh, but like you said, and this isn't a, a dump on James Tynan, but I that's tough. But we will review it on BOF proper. But that is tough. Fortunately, I, it has an end site yeah. uh, because I, I, it hurts because I've been a Batman. Batman's my title yeah. more than detective. Always yeah. been that ba way for Batman's some my reason. Title. Yeah. Um, I've always leaned more towards Batman than detective. And uh, this is my least favorite. I think that I've definitely, since I started reading regularly in 2005, uh, this is by far my least favorite run by a wide margin because grant morrison his by the end it wasn't for me uh yeah. but it was it was an exciting ride just the ending was a little was disappointing to me because it liked, was very trying to piece it together me rereading thinking I, if i yeah, missed I, something i'm like oh what is he doing here i like and it go, I, go ahead no, i was just gonna say it's it it was very exciting that whole ride until the very end and then it just wasn't for me and that's not to say that he did a bad job or anything it yeah. just wasn't for me and that was just a much funner process than this last, I don't know how I'm, long it's I'm, been. I'm with you completely. I enjoyed it up through RIP. Um, and any, all the other stuff after RIP, I wasn't a fan of. Yeah. You know, kind of mm -hmm. leads me into the, you know, I will pick up Batman again once this fear state is over with, uh, with the new writer. Um, not sure if I'm really on board i mean if you're going back to batman ink type of stuff with batman i'm a batman and gotham guy you know yeah status quo batman is my favorite batman give me alfred he's got money he's yeah. got a bat cave he's in gotham yeah come up with stories that way that's my but favorite. i will i will i will give it a shot mm -hmm. once it comes out i'm um so i could i could get off on a tangent but back on <laughs> back back on topic um there were people and I get it. There were people who uh, posted a few people. This was not the top three, but it was Batman Forever, Batman and Robin, you know? Yeah, Made makes them, sense. That you Say you're 10, you're 8, 10 years old and go see Batman Forever. I, was I like obsessed, Batman Forever. I was obsessed with Batman Forever. And I, was, I was prime audience. I was 9 years old when I, I saw that I was 30 movie. when it came out. <laughs> 20, no, a little 20, difference. 29. 29, 29 okay. sir. There you go. I wasn't 30 yet, almost a couple months away, but yeah. That was the coolest. The bat the symbol for okay, prime Jim Carrey time. I love Jim Carrey. I thought he was hilarious. Uh that question mark with the bat symbol. I had t-shirts. I had a ball cap. I had action figures. I that 
Batman Forever, I was their target audience for yeah. that. I loved that movie when it came out, and I still really like that movie. Yeah, I'm with you. I like I bring them up my my kids again. When they were little, we watched Batman Forever. We watched Batman Beyond, which it was was run was on air at that time, and um, Batman and Robin. And Micah will say, I don't care what anybody says. I love Batman and Robin. You know, I mean, he so, was. I watch it every year. I, I don't mean, care. <laughs> it, it, it came out the year he was born, and he watched it as a as a child, as a kid. And I mean, you put that in front of a kid, they yeah. don't think it's awesome. Yeah, they, they may think Batman and Robin is more awesome than Batman Forever. You know, if you're five, six, seven, eight years old. I think because once, thank you, Chris Nolan, that once we got the Dark Knight trilogy, yeah. the Batman and Robin got a lot better, if you think about yeah. it. Because for for that time period, we thought, oh, oh, hell, is this it? Is Batman and Robin it for Batman? And then we got the best interpretation of them mm-hmm. on screen, debatable, yeah. I know. But then it was like, okay, well, now we can go back and watch this and have fun with it because <laughs> we got a better version. All right. Last thing I wanted to ask you about and just kind of talk uh, briefly is that um, the director of The Flash, Andy Muschietti, mm-hmm. Much- Muschietti, um, I'm probably butchering this man's name. I apologize you know, I just, in advance. Andy M. Andy yes. M. That's usually where um, I go. He did drop. He's been kind of putting out, you know, mm-hmm. little bit, little bit, you know, the Supergirl logo from the suit. You know, yeah. the Keaton's Batman logo. Um just little things like that. The Flash and, too, right? The Flash. Didn't he drop Flashes? Yeah, too? he did. Yeah. Okay. Yes, because the movie is the Flash. Yeah. That he's don't in. forget about that. Yeah, yeah. don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like this is a Batman movie, but anyway, yeah. I'll digress. Um, he did put out one Monday. Was it? Was it Monday? Or Sunday I evening? Like Sunday. I think yeah. Sunday. Okay, it was late Sunday, and it's the Keaton bat suit that he'll wear that we've already seen him release. But it's like painted red with the Flash logo over the Batman logo, and so people are freaking out, wondering what that means, and assuming all sorts of stuff. You think it means anything, or you think he's just hyping the film that it's Batman oh, I and think Flash? It, I think it means something. Yeah. I, I have no clue. I have no insider info. I know nothing about what it could mean. I just feel like he's not just having fun. He's following a pattern here of, like you'd said, the Batman logo, Flash logo, Supergirl logo, and now this, which is a combination of the two. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really cool. I'm not one. Maybe when I was younger, I maybe tried, but now I don't. Like, I just enjoy the ride. So I'm not sitting there trying to figure I'm not reading. Um, uh, what do you want to say? People's ideas of what they think it means or anything. I'm nope. I'm like, that looks cool. Be interesting to see what it means. Cause I just assume that it means something in the movie. I think I have a, may have an idea what it represents. Cool. I'll tell you off the air. All right, <laughs> cool. Um, Hoping you would, <laughs> but, I, but I don't think it's uh, seeing some of the theories online. I don't think it's, I think like 99% of them are, are off base. I don't think um, I, I'm not, you know, a lot of them are Batman becomes a speedster. I'm so sick of that on the TV show. Everyone becomes a speedster. I don't think it's Batman becoming a speedster. It's And if this one's correct, you'll obviously say no. And I don't want you to say yes. Uh, but the one I saw somebody saying about the red death, it being like something with the red death, which I think was the, uh, a metal um, reference. Yeah. And I was like, I just, that's i feel like the whole dc metal thing is such a niche part of comic yeah. niche of a niche that there i just don't see that's the one thing that i can be, I don't think that that would be applied to the flash's movie if it's if it's so, as cl- no it, i don't no no <laughs> it's um i believe it's more symbolic and represents something mm-hmm than being literal you know yeah. what i mean yeah i'll say yeah, that, that i'll say that and that, yeah and i mean that that's almost what you could you could get from the image itself uh 
looking at it like oh mm-hmm. it's batman and flash together it's like, that's that's the movie batman and flash are going to be together in some capacity cool i wonder how it's gonna expand upon that so hey i'm not saying anything there you go yeah that's, that's next to bring topic. it up <laughs> i i just thought it was cool so next yeah, topic, i like it next topic is uh plugging stuff so Ooh. go ahead ryan um i aside from me writing for bof proper on the it's rough doing the batman t- the, the next two months just like this month it's a twice monthly the batman book is for fear state so oh that's tough but to counter that is uh batman the detective uh reviews are also on bof proper which that only has one issue left which is too bad because i really dig that story mm-hmm. um but i've got a ton of reviews including since this is video i've got the Batman Cow Lego review and build the, the next one, the Adam West one. That's mine's right there. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The the next one, the Adam yeah. West one comes out, starts shipping October 1st. October. I'm right. Look at this. I'm right. writing it down. October yeah. 1st. It starts shipping. And then I don't know how many weeks after that it starts to show up in stores, but uh, you bet I'm going to get, I'm going to get that one and yeah. maybe write something on that on POF. Yeah. And, uh, they've got more Lego stuff coming. Did you see, sorry, little off track. They're doing a also October first a Tumblr. They're starting to do like the Dark Knight trilogy ones. They're yeah. doing a Tumblr with yeah. Scarecrow and Batman, and Batman's head turns and be, it's like the the monster bat from Oh from really? Begins. Okay. And the Tumblr is probably going to be you know like your average size like this. And I thought that's awesome. I kind of want that. Yeah. And then they announced that November first they're doing the big ass Tumblr like they did with the Batmobile and the Batwing, which is going to be like two hundred and thirty dollars. So now I'm stuck. Oh wow. Yeah. And that's going to come with Batman and a Heath Ledger Joker as the, the figures with it. And I'm like, well, cool. shit, I want the Joker. I want Scarecrow. I want the <laughs> yeah. Batmans. Yeah. What do I do? This yeah, nerd problems. Those are uh, yes. my nerd problems. That's nerd problems for sure. But um, They're good, good ones, though. They are. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Batman Day, it's like I said, it's all year long. It's not just one day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, re- comic book reviews, Lego reviews, interview with Lee Bermejo, Bill and I's video reviews from uh, the Long Halloween screenwriter, Tim Sheridan, which I still think are awesome and plug whenever I can. Uh, all that's on Batman on Film. And also you can follow my podcast, The Batman Book Club, which talks about all of these great Batman stories that you can pretty much dive right into without having to do much research leading up to. And the most recent one is an Elseworlds tale, Gotham Noir, with uh, the champion of Long Island himself, uh, Eric Holzman. And the next episode will be a, a story called The Tower of Babel, which if you haven't heard of it, if you've seen the animated movie Justice League Doom, that's an adaptation of that story. And Batman is a huge uh, part of that of that story. Maybe even say he's the main character. And so looking forward to that. And that is uh, follow on Twitter at the Batman DC. And you can follow me on Twitter at Lauer underscore Ryan. Lauer spelled like Lauer. Okay, there we go. I have never read the Batman noir. And so I'm trying to hunt that one down. I think I, I think Amazon has some still. So I'm I think read it. your best chance for that one for Batman Gotham Noir, Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips uh, is digital. Digital, it's five bucks. Tracking down a physical, at least online, it's pretty it's tough. Pricey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, OK. Because I'm. I'm one of those. I, I do. Look, I do. I read digital every week, so I'm not yeah. going to I'm not going to be that. But. I would like to add that to my my collection. So I'm going to try yep. if it's not, you know, out of the world. Crazy. No. And, and yeah, if you find one, that's a decent price. You yeah. snatch it up because it's it's pretty pricey these days. I'll always choose physical over digital, but I love digital. It's beneficial. But give me yeah. that physical all the time. Yeah. Um, well, for me, I'll just do it. Make it go to Batman on film. You'll find all my stuff there. You can become a Patreon. You can buy a. Uh, uh, no F's left to no give t shirt. left to give. <laughs> wear, and wear that proudly. Um, you can, uh, of course, follow me on Twitter. That's following me. It's at Batman on Film. Lots of Batman on Film stuff, but also just stuff I spit out there just because, you know, that's what you do, right? Endless um, amounts of uh, Dick Shoes content, also. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Uh, isn't that what you do on the on the Twitter machine? Is just put out stuff. Is that what you do? Yeah, yeah. It's called. Hey, today I'm going to be a dick. I'm going to retweet myself. Can, can yeah, can, and, but yeah. You you put it out there on the Twitter machine, and if 
and I guess it, what is it if if it's not getting any tread or any reaction, you retweet it. Is that or how? Or if it if it's a day that ends in Y, that's oh. when you you make sure you retweet it. I got you. I didn't know that rule. And I got It's a masterful skill if you can reply to a retweet of a retweet of your own tweet. That's that's skill. That's that's hey, something. That's. <laughs> I can't. I can't even speak to that. That's something I'm. I would have to. Have, it'd have to be an online class or something for me to, you know, to take in to figure yeah. that out. It's probably that's, expensive. That's like, you know, it's like math to me or something. I don't know. <laughs> and I just it doesn't work in my my brain very well. Um, also on Twitter, on the Twitter machine, you'll find me at the Batman on film, and that's just straight up links. It's just straight up links. That's it. So. And uh, what am I missing? Oh, Instagram. I'm even showing up on Instagram. Can you believe that? Woo! That's more like, you know, all the kids love Instagram, right? They're, when are you going to start your TikTok channel? The kids love TikTok. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm thinking um, as soon as Dick Shoes starts yeah. TikToking, I'm either going to follow suit or I will quit immediately not even try <laughs> i don't know which oh, one oh uh, that'll just uh, yeah okay <laughs> Got nothing. Dude, you're trying to get me on a dick shoe <laughs> tangent i'm trying to get me on a dick shoe tangent. <laughs> i need to speaking of dick shoes you can you can check out his well it's really a team batman on film show uh the batman uh what's it called the satellite show the blf satellite show I know you've got some ideas for that. I got some ideas cooking. So yeah, scheduling um, is always the the enemy of podcasting. Yeah. So that's a show that we have here that it's not Batman centric, and we can yeah. talk about things that aren't Batman, like um, like Rick and them did one. I think Eric was part of it. They did one on the Tarantino films, you know. Yep. Um, so that's that's cool, you know. Yeah, that's and and I, I it was kind of my idea in a way because we used to have satellite shows that were part of the batman on film podcast so we do a show on i don't know star wars or whatever not my yeah. thing but whatever so i said well you know let's just make a show where we have that where people can you know all of us here on tbof yeah. like other things other batman. things we yeah. love batman but we like things that aren't batman like too, I, so you... I, I yeah i told uh i told garrett i said let's do a show me, me eric and uh garrett do a fantasy football slash, um, you know, NFL football show, you know, yeah. we, I, I, cool. I, don't, I don't, I don't have it. That's not an outlet for me. Really. I don't have one to talk about that mm -hmm. stuff. And that's another one of my passion. So anyway, just you find me on Batman on film, you'll find all that stuff there. And I guess that will be it. Any final words, any final words of wisdom? Um, read more Batman comics. There you go. That's, that would be good. <laughs> there you go. Yes. You know, Dick Shoes, he runs through a new Batman comic at least once a day. He's an encyclopedia on Batman he, comics. That's what I've heard. Challenge him to it, people. If you if you find some time in your day, he will answer any kind of Batman comic question you have. Oh, obscure. Send it his way. Yeah. Obscure stuff. He knows it all. He's, dig up, he's dig up, smart. Dig up something from 1942 <laughs> and ask. He'll know. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, but on, a, on another note, like the advice you've always you've always given bill and it applies here this is the calm before the storm oh Fandom yes. is I kicking off the batman yeah. storm so yes. enjoy the the fun leading up of the next hold on it, November, November, it's November. a it's like five less months. than six months yeah five six months. months it's a little over five months and that and movie's coming out in march in march like it's i i think i got i shouldn't even say it i was gonna say hopefully nothing we, we're getting over the hump we're over the hump of this of this past year and a half um that i think you've said multiple times of the release date is set the batman yeah. is coming yeah. in march 2022 yeah once that so. once fandom kicks off it's going to be you know how it's going to go it's going to be march oh, yeah. before we know it march 4th and i'm going to buy so much batman tie-in merchandise i just i'm already it. looking <laughs> for stuff you know i'm already I looking it. for you know i, I got two t-shirts but there's you know i got some you know, some stuff here and there. I was going to say, over your left shoulder, 
fandom, as soon as they dropped that, I bought yeah. that t And so we're that, at a yeah. movie that was over a year and a half away, and I'm like, nope, I need that shirt. Yeah. I need to start wearing it now. I got two of them. <laughs> I got two. I got, I got, yeah, I got the, I'm not going to start. I can, but yeah, <laughs> I want some, I want some, the Batman merchandise. I want, I, I want to see a Funko pop and all in action figures and all that other, whatever. I want to, I want to see it. So I want to get somebody it. dug up that uh, McFarlane order list is that the Batman figures are coming for the McFarlane yeah. line. Yeah. So I saw that. yeah, all saw my that. money. Oh my God. Yeah. All my money. Yes. So enjoy. <laughs> I mean, don't don't say, "Oh, I wish it was here," because it's going to be here, and then we're then we're going to be for waiting know, what, three, three years, years <laughs> you know, yeah. and then it'll be a year of probably no no news, you know, and we're going, "What's yeah. going?" You know. So anyway, enjoy. All right, I'm gonna get out of here. So for Ryan, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching or listening, depending on the format, and uh, we'll see you next time.